What is going on, mathly to the world? Welcome to Geometry Review. We're doing some density conversions and similarity review today. Um, just walking in through uh, the worksheet. Remember, we talked about volume surface area lateral layer yesterday. Formulas that go with it. Um, today, we're going to be doing some conversions. So, if you want to go through the, the old King Henry doesn't usually drink chocolate milk, um, the, the letters in front, so K for kilo, H for hecto, D for deca, the your unit, deci, centi, milli. So, these ones are smaller, and these guys are the bigger ones. So, kilogram, K okay, is a uh, thousand hectogram. Um, and then you have your unit, uh, you have your divide by 10, divide by 100, divide by 1,000 millimeter um, to get down to that number there. Um, all right, so density, we're going to be doing kind of both at the same time here. Density is uh, how much matter is in an object. We use the formula mass divided by volume, or D equals M over V, okay? Um, so if we just take a look at the first one, a square metal plate has a density of 10.2 grams per kilometer squared. And here we're talking about kilograms. So we're going to need to convert this into grams first, and then we can do um, the volume of the plate. So we have the, the weight or the mass, okay? We have the density. So uh, knowing those two things of information, the other thing you can do is if you solve for each letter, right, volume is actually equal to the mass divided by the density, and our mass is equal to the density times the volume. So we can do... Those three formulas will kind of help us out in, in, as we work along um, through today. Here, we'll do a little outline in different colors here for you guys. All right, so the first thing we need to do is convert from kilograms to grams. So 2.193 kilograms. Now, what we've done before is we've multiplied by our, what we call their scale factor, right? So how many grams per kilogram, right? Um, so we know one kilogram is equal to 1,000 grams. So when we multiply, we want the kilograms to cross out. That way, that's why it's one's in the top, one's in the bottom, okay? And then we're just going to uh, cross multiply and solve here. So we just do, um, well, we don't have to cross multiply. We multiply across, not cross multiply. So if we take a look, we're just gonna do 2.193 and then times 1,000, which basically just move this over three spots to the right, and they get 2,193 grams, okay? So the density is this, that's my weight in grams. So now the volume, right, is equal to the mass divided by the density. So it's equal to the mass, which is 2,193 grams, divided by 10.2 grams per centimeter cubed. And when we do that, we'll get our answer. So let's go back to this, 293 divided by 10.2, and I get 215. And that's centimeters cubed. Okay, the base of this plate has an area of 25 centimeters squared, determines thickness. So if you think about the metal plate, right, um, this is the area, is 25 centimeters squared, and then there's a thickness to it, so the how the height, like the height of this plate, that's what we need to figure out. So whatever this is times this has to equal 215, right? Volume is equal to the area of the base times the height. So 215 is equal to 25H, and then it's divided by 25. And I have my answer. And that's 4.6. All right. On the next page, we have a couple more questions, so we'll go through these ones. All right, these are some regions questions taken right out of your book that we haven't done. So, trees cut down and stripped of their branches and timber are practically cylindrical. So let's draw a picture of a cylinder. All right, the timber specializes in a certain type of tree that has a diameter of 50 centimeters, which means the radius is 25 centimeters, and a typical height of about 10 meters. Now, be careful, because we can already see the centimeters to meters. Now, remember, it's a factor of 10 to get from meters to centimeters. So 10 meters, right, times meters in the bottom, centimeters on the top, and there's 100 centimeters per one meter. So times two is going to give us 1,000 centimeters, okay? And the density of the wood is 38 kilograms per cubic meter, all right? Now, that tells us that we actually don't want to do centimeters, we want to do meters. So we're going to switch this. We're going to go back and put 10 centimeters or 10 meters here, 
and we actually can need to convert 25 centimeters into meters. So if we want to do that, we want centimeters on the bottom and meters on the top. So that's our conversion factor. Okay. We know one meter is 100 centimeters, and then we multiply right across. So this is going to be 25 over 100, which is just 1 fourth or 0.25. That's how many meters this is. Okay? So 0.25 meters. All right, and now we can figure out the rest. So um, we're going to do the volume first. So the volume is the area of the base times the height, which is pi r squared h, because it's a cylinder. So r, remember, is 0.25 times 10. And so 0.25 squared. I forget the squared on that guy. And I'm going to leave it in terms of pi for right now. So we want to do make sure we and we already forgot the squared here. And that's 0.625. 6, 2, 5. And that's in meters. That's the volume of our lovely uh, tree trunk here. Okay? Um, so what we want to do now is essentially figure out how many kilograms we have. It's $40.75 per kilogram. Okay? So this is our volume, right? That's in cubic meters. It's 380 kilograms per cubic meter. So... If you want this as a decimal, go ahead and multiply times pi. And you can see it's 1.9634. And this is how many cubic. Now you can kind of see why I left it in terms of pi, because I didn't have to write this out all the time. So um, it's 3 kilograms per cubic meter. This is how many cubic meters I have. So I'm going to take 0.625 pi, and I'm going to multiply this times um, 380. And this is going to be the number of kilograms. So times 380, and I get 746.1282552288 kilograms. And then it's $4.75 per kilogram. So we're going to take this number, 746.1285522288, and we're going to multiply that times. $4.75. Now remember, this is a money question. My calculator just died. <laughs> okay, and because this is a money question, we want to round this answer off, okay, uh, and to, to the nearest hundredth because it's money. It's a dollar, so we want to round it to the nearest cent. And so this, right, is equal to $3,544.11. Just be careful. This is with the round two. It just says minimum trees. Now... This is how much each tree costs, one of those. So if I want to get 50 grand, right, how much am I going to have to do? So you can see this is a six-point question. This is a lot of work. Um, so we just take 50,000 and divide it by $3,544.11. And this is approximately 14.10791. Four, two, five, seven, seven. Now, how many whole trees? Well, I can't have 0.1 of a tree, so this answer is 15. <coughs> trees, excuse me. All right? Okay. Likewise, contractor needs to purchase some bricks, 500 of them. The dimensions of the brick are listed. Centimeters, centimeters, centimeters. The density is in meters. So right away we know that there's a conversion that's going to have to take place. Okay, and then we have kilograms, so we just need to convert these centimeters into meters. So remember, centimeters to meters, uh, it's going to get smaller, right? So 5.1 centimeters times centimeters on the bottom, meters on the top, 1 over 100. So I divide by 100, and that's going to happen for all of these, okay? 
which means it moves two decimal places back. So it's 0 0.051 meters, it's 0 0.102 meters, and it's 0 0.203 meters. That's the dimensions of my brick. Okay, so this is 5.1 .1 divided by 100, and that's, what, that's why we're moving the decimal place two spots back. All right, so the volume of my brick is length times width times height, which is 0 0.5, zero, I should say, 51 times 0 0.102 times 0 0.203. We're going to hit enter, and there is the crazy awesome volume. So it's 0 0.00105600, and this is meters cubed. Pretty small. Now, the tractor can hold 900 kilograms, right? Um, and the mass is 1,920 kilograms per cubic meter. This is how many cubic meters I have. So I want to know how much this weight. So the weight is equal to uh, this volume, so 0 0.00105606 times 1920, okay? And then the answer is 2.02753152. Notice I'm not rounding for people, right? No rounding until we are done, none until the last step. Okay, um, wait, ends in a T. And then what we're going to do now is figure out if I have 500 bricks, how much is that all together? Okay, so 2.02753152 times good old 500 of these guys. And I get 1,013.76576 kilograms. And then we say, no, the trailer trailer can't hold me down right hold the bricks the weight is over 900 kilograms all right that's it so remember justify means show your math and that is indeed what we just did okay shipping container in the shape of a right rectangular prism with a length of 12 feet and width of 8.5 feet and height of four Ooh, draw a picture for yourself if you need to. Okay, shipping container. 12, 8.5, 4, not from the scale. And it's 2.5 pounds per cubic foot. What is the weight of the container? So this is just easy. Cubic foot, right? Make sure you pay attention to the units. That indicates we're doing a volume. So volume of this is length times width times height, 4 times 8.5 times 12. Okay, this is 408 cubic feet, and then the weight is just that number, okay, is 408 times 0.25 pounds per cubic foot, and this is 102, and there's our answer. Next guy, the hemispherical tank is filled with water, has a diameter of 10 feet, and a weight of 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. Once again, that's a volume question. Okay, so figure out the volume and then calculate. Now, we're doing a volume of a hemisphere. So remember, this is sphere divided by 2. So it's 4 thirds. It's half, right, the sphere. Pi r cubed. That's 1 half the volume, which 4 thirds pi times diameter is 10, radius is 5 to the third, boom, is 523.5987755598. Or you can do it in terms of pi, right? Which is 166 and two thirds pi, whatever you want to do. We have to take half of that. So the total volume, right? is 261.7993877799, otherwise known as 83.3 repeating pi, all right? 
And then it's 62 pounds per cubic foot, so we're going to multiply that times 62.4. So 261.79938. Isn't this fun, guys? Right? Times 62.4. And I get a grand total of 16,336. And that's boom, choice one. All right, thanks for sticking with me through that part. The next part is the scaling principle for area and volume. So please remember, if two similar solids have a scale factor of A to B, right? So their scale factor here is 2 to 3. That's the ratio of the sides, scale factor. The area is squared, so this is going to be 4 to 9. And the volumes is cubed. That's 8 to 27, okay? So squared for areas, cubed for volume, and then you would do cubed root or square root to go back. So the way you want to do this is you always want to figure out the scale factor or the ratio of the sides first to kind of move on to the next step if you need to. This also should be cubed. The heights of two similar solids are 5 and 3. The volume is, of the larger is 750. What is the volume of the smaller? So we want to, first of all, make a proportion. Now, this, friends, is the wrong proportion. Do not do this. No doing. You may not do 5 over 3 is equal to 750 over x. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. Centimeters, centimeters cubed, not in the same units, cannot compute, okay? First thing you need to do is take 5 over 3, and you need to cube it so that we can get to volumes. So this is 125 over 9, and now we can compare. So 125 over 9 is equal to 750 over, I don't know, but I want to, right? We cross multiply. 125x is equal to 750 times 9. Now you can even reduce... 125 over 9 if you want to, right? And it will. It won't. It won't. Don't, don't do it. It won't. I just did it. it it's a waste of time. 6,750. We divide by 125 because that is the way that we do it here. Okay? And we get an answer of 1 over 9. No, we don't. We do not get that answer. 6, 7. Five zero, right about 125. How about we get an answer of 54? And now you know, and knowing is half the battle. Two of the volume of two similar solids is cubed. This side, the smaller side, is two centimeters. What's the length? Remember, don't do the wrong thing here and do 54 over 16 is equal to something over 2. No, no, no. Don't do that, right? So first thing we have to do is take 54 over 16, and we have to cube root this, okay? So on your calculator, see it, know it, love it. See the symbols button, symbols button, right by the 9. See it? Press it. Choose the root button with the little box, okay? Or control, and then that carrot button. That's okay, too. Now we're going to do cube root first. We're going to do the fraction next. So 54 on the bottom, top. Control divide, 16 on the bottom, and boom, we get 3 over 2. So this is equal to 3 over 2. So now, the smaller is 2, the other one's just 3, right? 3 over 2 equals, I don't know, over 2, and this is pretty easy, right? So 6 is equal to 2x. You can go down this road, or you can just say to yourself, self, if that's 2 and this is 3, then x has to equal 3, okay? Number 3, the lengths of two similar solids are 10 and 6. What is the ratio of their surface areas? Areas, right? Do not, repeat, do not do 10 over 6 is equal to something, right? What do you do for the areas? The sides are not equal to the areas, okay? We need to take 10 over 6, okay? And we need to square that thing. Now, what you can do, you can reduce 10 over 6 first and say, well, this is just equal to 5 over 3, right? So if I square it, okay, the surface areas are squared. That's 25 over 9. And the volumes are cubed. So this would be 125 over 27. All right, on to the last one. Similarity. Remember, when you're doing the similarity questions, just are these similar and why? There's three theorems. There's angle, angle, right? So if you have no side lengths, you use an angle, angle. Got it? Get two sets of angles congruent. We got ourselves angle, angle. The next one, side, side, side. All three sides are proportional. And remember, if you want to show that they're proportional, 
you need to create this extended proportion and show that these are all equal to the same number, okay? Or cross multiply the pairs and show that they're equal to the same thing. For side angle side, you need one congruent angle and the two touching sides to be um, proportional. Remember, the angle has to be in between them, okay? Included angle. That's important, included angle, all right? Okay, similarity in right triangles. This is one where you have the altitude drawn to the hypotenuse. That's the key phrase they love to throw in. That's where you're going to draw out your three triangles. You're going to label your sides. You're going to pick your ratios, create your proportion, right, for the corresponding sides, and then solve. Make sure you draw out your three triangles. Make sure you label each side. Make sure you label X as what you're trying to find. Make sure you pick out your corresponding sides as the proportion. And you may have to use Pythagorean theorem if you don't have uh, corresponding pairs. You look at it and you're like, man, if I only had this one side over here, it's like, can you actually get that side? Because you can, then do it. Okay? All right. First triangle, RST, shown below, altitude S2, SU is drawn. Okay? To RT, altitude drawn to hypotenuse. So SU is H, UT is 12, and RT is 42, which means this is 30. All right? So I drop my three triangles. Bang, those are the big guy, right? We got a little medium sized guy, and then we got mini me. And this is really not drawn very well. It should be like chopped out, right? Okay, so big triangle. All I have is the 42 on the bottom. That's where the right angle is up top, okay? Triangle on the right, the middle triangle. I have the short leg and the long leg. Hypotenuse is across. So I have H and 30 for the long leg. Small triangle. Right? H and 12. Big and long leg, not the hypotenuse. So small is 12, big is H, and bam, we got ourselves a proportion. Okay? So we can just pick uh, corresponding sides and pair them up, either this way, that way, or from triangle to triangle. Let's go triangle to triangle. 30 over H. Okay? So 30 to H. Go back over here. H over 12. So H squared is equal going to equal 12 times 30 should be 360. Oh, well, you know I'm checking that out because just want to be certain we got it. And then we're going to take the square root of both sides. Okay, now, big time. I get here. Which one of these matches, right? Oh my gosh, I forgot how to do this. But if you just, because it's multiple choice, if you just type it in, that's got to be my decimal. See it? Just type these in. What's 6 radical 3? Oh, doesn't match that. 6 radical 10. Oh, that matches, right? If you get another one that matches, let's just say, you know, crazy talk here. Um, let's say it's 2 radical 90. Oh, look at that. That matches. But the 10 is smaller than the 90. So we're always going to go with the smaller number in the radical if we can. But to actually do this, remember, we press menu. 2 for number, okay? Then we go over to factor which is 3. We type in our radicand, which is 360. We hit enter, and it spits out the prime factors. Let's see if you guys can see this any better. Any better. There we go. See it? You can also just type in the word, the letters, right? F-A-C-T-O-R with a parentheses, and that will let you do it too. See? Same thing. Okay? Now, that means that there's three twos, two threes, and then a five. So I circle my sets of numbers. I got a set of threes, a set of twos. One of those comes out. There's a three and a two in front now. And inside, there's a two and a five. And then I multiply back together. So that's six radical ten. And bang, boom, bowie. We got that one. All right. What is the length of AD? So we've got the right triangle, altitude drawn to hypotenuse, right? So we label AD as X, okay? This side technically could be 36 minus X, all right? Um, but we don't need it at this point, okay? Um, and then we can draw three triangles. So I got the big kahuna, right? The medium size guy, and the little one. So big triangle. I have 12 all the way on the short leg. The hypotenuse is 36. Medium-sized triangle, I have a long leg of 36 minus X, and that's it. And the small guy, I have X for the short leg, 12 for the hypotenuse, and then bam. Okay, so 12 over, you want to come down here, 36. 
is equal to x over 12. B cross multiply, 144 is equal to 36x. We divide out by 36, and we get ourselves an answer. And we got 4. And that's the length of AD. Make sure you read the question. Did they ask for this one? Did they ask for that one? Okay, double check it. All right? That's it, guys. Enjoy your night. We'll see you tomorrow.